Hello my lovelies! Today I have a massive bookish unboxing for you, so stay tuned! So I have nine different book boxes here to unbox for you. I've got a YA and Adult Unplugged Book Box and then I also have some Book of the Month boxes and I'm very very excited. I'm ready to dig right in. These are not in any particular order. I know that these two are the newer, I think, maybe, of the unplugged ones. I know this one is, I think. I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> these are all mixed up out of order. They just kind of piled up and I needed to do a big unboxing. So I'm gonna start with uh, this book of the month. And I will also link both of these boxes down in the description if you want to go and check them out. I'm also going to change the angle of this camera because it's up high so you can see all these boxes. Okay, that's better. So in this particular box, I'm not sure which one. Oh, this was the September 2023 one. I got You Again by Kate Goldberg. Let's see. This one says... Can they stop hating each other long enough to fall in love? When Ari and Josh first meet, the wrong kind of sparks fly. They hate each other. Instantly. A free-spirited, struggling comedian, Ari likes to keep things casual and never sleeps over after hooking up. Josh, a born and bred New Yorker, has ambitious plans to take the culin culinary world by storm and find the one. They have absolutely nothing in common except they happen to be sleeping with the same woman. Ari and Josh never expect their paths to cross again, but years later, as they're both reeling from ego-bruising breakups, a chance encounter leads to a surprising connection. Friendship. Turns out spending time with your former nemesis is fun when you're too sad to hate each other and too sad for hate sex. As friends without benefits, they find comfort in late-night Netflix binges, swiping through each other's online dating profiles, and bickering across boroughs. Until one night, the unspoken boundaries of their platonic relationship begin to blur. With sharp observations and sizzling chemistry, you again explores the dynamics of co-ed friendship in this irresistible romantic comedy of modern love in all its forms. And I thought this one sounded super cute. And the bookmark says, in the throes of prose. Let's just, let me take this box and we can set this book there. Okay. So we have this unplugged book box. So they switched to doing like uh, digital spoilers and stuff. So you can like scan and see what the thing is. But um, so I don't know actually what month this is. I don't know what this is. It looks like a strap for maybe a purse or something. And it says I'd rather stay in reading. I'm sure we'll find out what that goes to shortly. Then we've got Sally's Vitamin B Face and Body Toner. From Bath Apothecary. So Sally's uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Then we have Iris Hollow Niacinamide B3 Essence. Okay. Oh, I think this is what the strap goes for. Cresswell and Wadsworth Investi Investigator Kit. Okay. And it's got like the places to hook the straps. Though it does have like a little wrist strap that you can use as well. And this is what it has like little pockets inside and stuff. This is pretty neat. I'm guessing this is a candle. Let the games begin. And it says a deadly game on top. Ooh. That smells really good. This smells like cookies. Yum. There's a big thing in here. What is this? Okay, I'm kind of confused. So, right on top, we have this recipe here for loose sticky buns from Serpent and Dove. Okay, so I thought maybe we would have stuff for that, but we have two packs of, like this pack of stickers but there's only two kinds but there's several of them um but yeah they look like that and then we have a little um funnel 
we have what looks like not a wine cork but like a cork for putting in and pouring stuff out oh, wait there's more stuff down in there there's two of them okay makes sense so we got two of these and then we have two of these really cool bottles so I can put these whatever liquid in there with it this cork in like so and then we pour out like that the only thing I can figure about these stickers is they're supposed to be maybe uh, labels but there's so many of them like all of these here they're all the exact same thing our lives reflect our hearts dame blanche elixir honey sweet nectar but yeah there's so many of them and then this one is like blood so we got blood and honey this one's supposed to be vanilla extract um but yeah there's so many of the exact same thing so i don't know why we have i'm confused i get why there'd be one label for each but not that many but this is very cool. I'll definitely, definitely use this. I don't know what I'm going to do with all those stickers, but I'll definitely use this. And then we have the book, The Girls from Hush Cabin by Mary Hoy Kinney. And the edges look like so. This does have a reversible dust jacket it looks like this the book looks like this and the end pages look like this and there is a letter from the author in the book here it says dear reader this is my first published book and i'm thrilled that you're about to experience it I've been writing my whole life, publishing short stories and poetry online, but a book deal was my biggest dream, and I'm so, so excited that it's finally happened. Sharing my words with the world is an awesome and humbling experience, and the gratitude I feel is incredible. Here's how it happened for me. My agent, Amy Nordstrom Higdon, sent out my stories, and I patiently held hope alive that something good would come of it. That was sometimes challenging. In January 2021, Brendan... Deneen, who was the president of literary and IP development at Assemble Media, approached me to write a book based on his concept, a novel, about, a novel about four friends who drifted apart after years of going to summer camp together. They reunite at their former counselor's funeral, suspect her so-called accidental death was murder, and decide to investigate. I immediately said, sign me up. I've always wanted to write a thriller. I read a lot of Ruth Ware, Sherry Lapina, Karen McManus, and Sarah Shepard. All I watch are thriller movies and shows. They keep my attention like no other genre. I love the mystery, the intrigue, the red herrings, everything. I simple one in multiple points of view, and I was more than up for that. Books with different perspectives have always fascinated me. Here's a little secret for you. When writing about Zoe, Callista, Holly, and Denise, I he drew heavily on my own experiences at various stages of my life. They each had a hurdle I dealt with in my young adult life in my quest to be happy. Like Zoe, there was a time in my life when I thought that finding a relationship was my key to happiness. I was looking for love like it was the solution to everything negative I felt, and I didn't realize, didn't yet realize that I needed to start by appreciating myself. Like Callista, I started high school with goals to achieve. I wanted to earn a scholarship, so I pushed myself and was very ambitious, and for a while that was my focus more than my friendships and relationships. Loneliness struck, and I realized I needed people in my life to be truly content. Holly cares a lot about appearances and doesn't trust herself to make good decisions when she isn't in a relationship with someone she feels keeps her grounded. In my past, I had a lengthy relationship with someone who had some controlling personality traits, and I lost myself for a while. Like Denise, there was a time in my life when I felt like I was in a rut, and I felt unlucky, and I let fear dictate my life. In time, I realized that I was only ever going to be as happy as I expected. I had so much fun writing these characters. This is a story about four friends who've grown apart and are later brought back together. They argue, they get annoyed with each other, they're even suspicious of each other, but in the midst of all the danger and hijinks, they find moments of bonding. So reader, here we go. You're about to start the book, but before you do, I want to want to thank you for immersing yourself in the world of Hush Cabin with me. I hope you enjoy reading this novel because I absolutely love the experience of writing it. 
With warmest wishes, Mary Hoy Kinney. Very cool. All right. Okay, so that's everything in that box. Let's go. Let's go to this box next. This one is heavy. Okay. This, oh, this is so cool. The finest of pleasures are always the unexpected ones. It's like a little like storage or glass baking dish. And there's something, there's stuff inside of it. Okay, we have Morticia's face serum, salicylic acid serum. Cool. We have this very cool metal bookmark that looks like a stack of books. Oh, and then signed book plate. Or should I say signed book plates? <laughs> yeah, there's two signed book plates, same author. But this, this is very cool. I love how incredibly useful the items are that come in the unplugged book boxes. Okay, next we've got, it starts with this face mask. Ah, okay. So there are two signed book plates because there are two books by the author. We have Preset and Reset by Serena Dolan. So I need to see which one of these is first. Oh, they're both really pretty. Okay, so I think this one was actually first, but this is a prequel. So I don't know which one to read you first. Okay, so Reset came out in 2021 and Preset came out in 2023. So let's read what it says for Reset. I have to take the plastic off. Okay, so first, let's just show you what they look like. This is Preset. And the edges look like that. It, this doesn't have a reversible dust jacket. But the book looks like this. And the end pages, same in the front and back, look like that. And then reset, very pretty. Oh, and the end pages look like that. Okay, for reset, this says. Can you love someone you don't remember? After the last war destroyed most of the world, survivors form a new society in four self-sustaining cities in the Mojave Desert. In the utopia of the four cities, inspired by the lyrics of Imagine and Buddhist philosophy, everything is carefully planned and controlled, the seasons, the weather, and the residents. To prevent mankind from destroying each other again, its citizens undergo a memory wipe every four years in a process called tabula rasa, a blank slate to remove learned prejudices. With each new cycle, they began again with new names, jobs, homes, and lives. No memories, no attachments, no wars. Eris, a scientist who shuns love, embraces tabula rasa and the excitement of unknown futures. Walling herself off from emotional attachments, she sees relationships as pointless and avoids deep connections. But she is haunted by a reoccurring dream that becomes more frequent and vivid as time passes. After meeting Benja, a handsome, free-spirited writer who believes his dreams of a past lover are memories, her world is turned upside down. Obsessed with finding the Dreamers, a secret organization thought to have a way to recover memories, Benja draws her down a dangerous path towards the past. When Metis, the leader of the Dreamers, appears in Eris's life, everything she believes falls to pieces. Little time left before the next tabula rasa, they begin a bittersweet romance, navigating love in a world where names, lives, and moments are systematically destroyed. Thought-provoking and emotionally resonant, Reset will make you consider the haunting reality of love and loss and the indelible marks they leave behind. Interesting. I forgot to mention this earlier in the video, but normally I would have hair and makeup done, but um, I recently injured my eye and I'm not, I'm not comfortable putting makeup on yet, so <laughs> hence the all-natural look. <laughs> okay, next we're going to do this unplugged book box. Well, that was unplugged too, but yeah. Okay. So this one is a mystery. All right. A little black box. The Handmaiden's Nail Care Oil. It's uh, pure rose hemp oil. 
bunny. Bunny. All right, what's in the box? How stinking cute. It's a, a little like bowl with a lid or, and we've got like a little coffee shop. There's a haunting cafe. Oh, it's cafe of horrors. There's like little ghosts in it. How cute. I feel like there's something that's supposed to go there because it's got a funny little shape. Okay. None of these boxes are labeled, so they're all like very mysterious. Edward's Eternal Elixir Face Oil. It says vitamin e, vitamin e, sunflower oil, glycine, so, oh, soybean oil, vitamin E, sesame seed oil, lemon oil, corn oil, and germ oil. Or wheat germ oil. <laughs> okay. Another mysterious box. A candle. Give in to your appetite. Ooh. This smells like sweet tarts. This must be a hol the Halloween box. Everything's very dark and mysterious. This is very like, smells like candy. Our next mystery box here. Oh my gosh. How stinking cute. Okay, so this is a little cough, like a little cafe, a little ghosty cafe, and this is a sugar bowl. And then we have Bookshop for the Strange and Peculiar, Rare Books, Oddities. It's a little spooky bookstore, and this is for your cream. It's so cute. I love it. And I guess that little thing is for a spoon. Oh, I didn't see a spoon in here, but still super cute. Okay, then the book. Oh my. <laughs> it's a uh, Long Time Dead by Samara Breger. And she be delicious. <laughs> the edges. Okay, uh, this one doesn't have a reversible dust jacket. But the book. Looks like that. Oh, and the end pages look like that. There's a signed page here. And we do have a letter from the author. It says, Dear Reader, in 1797, English romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge wrote the first part of his ballad, Christabel, which he intended to have five parts. It begins in a moonlight wood. It begins in a moonlit wood where the titular young woman comes upon a mysterious stranger. This stranger called Geraldine claims to have been taken from her home by warriors on white steeds. Feeling pity for Geraldine, Christabel takes the woman back to her father's hall for comfort and rest, but all is not well. Stepping through the iron gate pains Geraldine. The mastiff moans in its sleep when she walks past. The dead hearth spark. When the two women reach Christabel's bedchamber, Geraldine calls out to the spirit of Christabel's dead mother. Off, woman, off, this hour is mine. Though thou her guardian spirit be, off, woman, off, tis given to me. Then the women undress. Geraldine takes Christabel in her arms. From what happens in the dark, something magical and wicked emerges. Lord Byron said that the poem took a hold on his imagination, which he shall never wish to shake off. Percy Shelley had nightmares after reading it. It inspired works by Edgar Allan Poe, Sheridan Le Fanu, and The Cure. And Samuel Taylor Coleridge never finished it. I, like many others before me, have laid awake wondering what happened to Christabel and Geraldine. Over two centuries later, this has proven to be Geraldine's true power. While she never reached her story's end, she still managed to work her way into innumerable unsettled minds. Maybe this explains why the lesbian vampire endures. Maybe every book, every movie, TV show, play, poem, all of us writers tangled up in the terrifying, hungry sensuality, that bloodlust and passion, the love that cannot die. Maybe all of it was in search for that first lesbian vampire's ending. Or maybe it's something simpler. Maybe it's just that she's really sexy. A Long Time Dead started as a novella about two women who meet across centuries to discuss the reasons they can't be together, mostly having to do with the women they both want to kill. When I decided to expand it into a novel, I took a closer look at the long history of the lesbian vampire. 
How Taboo, Queer Sexuality Became Bloodlust, Predatory, Penetrative, and Ultimately Destructive. How Anxieties About a Woman's Sexual and Societal Power Turned Her Into a Monster. How in the absence of a natural death, a creature's excess years might lead her to pleasures outside the natural order. There is no shortage of inspiration, but whenever I put my characters in a moonlit wood, shielded by trees, their faces illuminated with cool light, I revisited Christabel and Geraldine and their unfinished story. Enjoy. Interesting. I think this is going to be a fun read. Okay, that's everything in that box. Let's go to this book of the month up here. And try not to drop these things on my head. Okay, this is October's book. I selected Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. This says, A gorgeously modern gothic fantasy from the best-selling author of The Ten Thousand Doors of January. I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. Opal is a lot of things. Orphan, high school dropout, full-time cynic, and part-time cashier. But above all, she's determined to find a better life for her younger brother, Jasper. One that gets them out of Eden, Kentucky. A town remarkable for only two things. Bad luck and E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland, who disappeared over 100 years ago. All she left behind were dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it is best to ignore the uncanny mansion and its misanthropic heir, Arthur. Almost everyone, anyway. I should be scared, but in the dream, I don't hesitate. Opal has been obsessed with the Underland since she was a child. When she gets the chance to step inside Starling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund, she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House, and Arthur's own nightmares have become far too real. As Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghosts, Opal realizes that she might finally have found a reason to stick around. In my dream, I'm home, and now she'll have to fight. Welcome to Starling House. Enter if you dare. And I loved the 10,000 Doors of January, so I was excited to get this. And the bookmark says, Boo, it's me, a reading break. It's got a little ghost. Very cute. All right, which one do we want to do next? Let's do this one up here. All right. What is this? This thing is huge. Okay, there's no way I can show this because it's just massive. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this, this is like a huge sheet and I can't even tell what's on it. So what I'm going to do is tomorrow I'm going to lay this out on my bed and get a picture or something of it so that I can show you what it actually looks like and I will insert that here. Regardless, this is very cool. Like this is a, I don't know what size like bed sheet. All right, next up we have something in this pretty little box. I'm, it's, it's a bowl. I'm not really sure what this is from though. If anybody knows, you can comment down below. It almost looks like they're in the desert or mountains or something. I don't know. So every month, um, I have coffee patrons and every month I pick a book buddy of the month from my wine tour coffee patrons and I send them a goodie box and I think I'm going to include this as possibly one of the things I put in a goodie box for one of them. If you're interested in becoming a coffee patron I will link that up above. Go and check out what all the tiers get and everything. We have a lot of fun in there. Oh my gosh this is really cute. It's like, this is like a woven, really nice and stretchy bag. This is Babel. This is very cool. It's like a little purse. And it's like thick material. I like it, but I don't know that this is something I would actually use. So I'm going to put it back in this little plastic bag. And this is going to go into a thing for uh, coffee patrons. We got a couple of packs of some Earl Grey tea. What's on the back? Agatha Chris tea. <laughs> Cute. I don't know if this is a magnet or like a vinyl sticker, but it's really cute. 
It feels kind of like a magnet. Something in a little mystery box. Essential oil roller. Oranges, lavender, and siren magic. It's called Calypso. Let's smell. I love the smell of orange. Hmm. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this one. I'm going to see if Xander's interested. I don't really smell much orange in that. Okay, and then we have the book. Truth in Blue by... Mariah Amell. Pretty cover. And the edges. This one does have a reversible dust jacket. The book looks like, oh my, looks like so. The end pages. Okay, this has a letter inside. It says, Dear Reader, Through Autumn Gale I chase life. Parts of me that I forgot. Parts of him that I missed. I chased life while life chased me. Yes, it is fictionalized. And of course, any similarity to any person dead or living place or event is totally coincidental. But dressed in magic and swords, hidden in metaphors and illusions, I am sharing my life with you. The one that chased me through the labyrinths of PhD, armed with failures, successes, loves, loss, friendships, and misunderstandings. It was when time slowed down, yet went so fast, that I realized how little control we have over our fates and dreams. Goals and priorities keep changing as we live through each day, and we have to change with it. So one day, I packed my past in ripped rosebuds and let them drift away. Hoping they will reach some of you, and that way it won't ever truly be gone. With all my love, Mirai. Well, that didn't really tell me anything about the book. So, this says, Sometimes life is better as a lie. Malachi wanted to protect his kingdom from threats beyond his borders. Instead, stripped of his magic and on the run, he now needs to save it from his brother, the king himself. Amaryllis wanted to have nothing to do with humans. Instead, stranded... In the wrong realm, she now needs to retrieve a lost fey relic with powers no one comprehends. Una wanted to be a knight in a shining armor, a knight in shining armor, instead haunted by the memories of a life she never lived. Una now needs to find answers from someone she doesn't remember meeting. When their paths cross, they must each decide what matters to them the most, or risk losing everything they hold dear. In a world where angels and shades battle for souls, while the devil sips his tea, the fate of one country, two races, and four realms hangs in the balance when love and loyalties are tested to their limits. All right. Okay, I am going to take a quick break because my battery's about to die and change that out because we still have three boxes to go. All right, let's go with this one that keeps threatening me. <laughs> This one looks like so. Now uh, we have another one of those like metal bookmarks that looks like a stack of books. These are like darker, a little more spooky. We got another big thing. Okay, I can't tell if this is a towel or a blanket. It feels like a, a microfiber. It's thin like that. Oh yeah, this is a like a towel. I'm not sure from what this is from. Hold on. I don't know if y'all have any clue. I'll give that to Xander. And then we've got this uh, enchantment soothing face mask. Tavia under eye cream for recovery after long days in the water. Oh, this must be must have been like a summer box, beach towel, something for under the water, like after you've gotten out of the water. I don't know what this is, but it looks kind of cool. It's in a box. Oh, this is cool. The villainous journal. This is very cool, and it's got like a little anchor here. Um, ribbon bookmark. Oh, not an anchor. Uh, what do you call it? 
the steering wheel thing. So we've got an anchor and the steering wheel thing. Okay, so I think the anchor one, oh, the anchor has a heart on it too. I think that works like a bookmark. And okay, it has like these punch out things here. One was already starting to come out, so it came out the rest of the way. I don't know how these, how it works. Maybe this one's supposed to be the bookmark. I don't know. So I figure you can either do it like this, like put this through here and then like, I don't know, stick it through there or something. I don't really know. <laughs> or maybe there's some way to do it with all these different slits. Maybe Xander can figure it out. I'm feeling kind of dumb at the moment. I would probably just like stick that in there, wrap it around and like tuck it in there or something. Cause I think that looks kind of cool. This is something Xander I think will love. Okay, the book is The Second Death of Eddie and Violet or Edie and Violet Bond by Amanda Glaze. And the edges look like this. It doesn't have a reversible jacket, but this is what the cover looks like. The end pages look like this, and it is signed right here. It's also signed here. All right, this says Sacramento, 1885. Edie and Violet Bond know the truth about death. The 17-year-old twins are powerful mediums, just like their mother. Violet can open the veil between life and death, and Edie can cross into the spirit world. But their abilities couldn't save them when their mother died and their father threatened to commit them to a notorious asylum. Now runaways, Edie and Violet are part of a traveling spiritualist show, a tight-knit group of young women who demonstrate their real talents under the guise of communing with spirits. Each night, actresses, poets, musicians, and orators all make contact with spirits who happen to have something to say. Notions that young ladies could never openly express. But when Violet's act goes terribly wrong one night, Edie learns that the dark spirit responsible for their mother's death has crossed into the land of the living. As they investigate the identity of her mysterious final client, they realize that someone is hunting mediums, and they may be, <clears throat> and they may be next. Only by trusting in one another can the twins uncover a killer who will stop at nothing to cheat death. Hmm. All right. Okay. Let's go with this one next. Oh, this is a special box that I ordered. This is not one of their regular monthly boxes. I forgot I had ordered this one. This is Back to the 90s limited edition box. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited for this box. <laughs> okay, so I got a shirt that says... Snick and chill. Love that. We got some Clarissa Explains It All socks. So cute. <laughs> so this uh, little like satin scrunchie or whatever. It's got little Tamagotchis all over it. So cute. Oh, here's another one. So this one's a Clarissa Explains It All. These are so cute. Oh, I love this. Oh, this is so cool. So we got a metal tumbler and there's a lid and it says 90s vibe or 90s vibes and it's just got like <laughs> things from the 90s all over it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Welcome to horror land where nightmares come to life. It's a goosebumps tote bag. Oh, and on the back it says, are you afraid of the dark? The Midnight Society. I, I used to love watching Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then we've got a Love the 90s umbrella. Oh my gosh. S-E-K Arthur. I've got... Oh my gosh, there's just so many. All that. There's Charlie Brown. Batman. Robin. Avatar. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wait. Hey, it's Albert. Powerpuff Girls. Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> this is so fun. Oh, 
That's very cool. I think Xander may steal this from me. <laughs> the same with the Goosebumps bag. Oh my gosh. There's a little cassette pin. And it's just best of the 90s. <laughs> I wonder if Xander would even know what a cassette is. Oh, we have a straw for our tumbler. Buffy. This is lotion. Tobacco, cherry, and brandy. I think Xander would probably like the scent better than I do, but I love that it's Buffy. Who loves orange soda? Kel's orange soda. Oh my gosh. Keenan and Kel. Oh, that smells so good. And it's orange and glittery. Love that. This box is just so much freaking fun. We got a Let's see if I can get close enough. It's the friend's door keychain. I think this is the last thing. It's a Boy Meets World notebook. It says, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. You're you and I am I. And if in the end we end up together, it's beautiful. Beanie. I love you all. Class dismissed. Life's tough. Get a helmet. <laughs> When I got friends, I can get through anything. Oh my gosh, I love it. The back says, believe in yourself. Dream, try, do good. Lose one friend, lose all friends, lose yourself. Use a mirror, babe. Chubby's famous. <laughs> Underpants. John Adams High School. This is the back. I love it. That was such a fun, fun box there. I love it. Okay, we're down to the final box here. Ooh, that's a heavy one, too. Oh, really big thing. Oh, my goodness. That's most of the box right there. <laughs> what is this? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Like, this is... This is awesome. This looks like somebody hand, like hand knitted or hand crocheted this. So it's a little blanket you put your legs in and it's a mermaid fin. Like, but this is like, it's got an unplugged tag on it. This took some serious work. Like, wow. This is impressive. That's very, very cool. And that would definitely, you know, make sense to not have it. I imagine that that costs quite a bit because that's a lot, a lot of work. Wow. That's all I can say. Just wow. I think this is a scarf, like a silky scarf. And it's, it's like books and mushrooms. <laughs> that's cool. I don't really wear scarves, so I don't know that I would actually use this, but I think I'm going to put this um, back in its packaging and put this as one of the giveaways for my coffee patrons. All right, then we have something in this baggie. We have another baggie. Oh, okay, so this bag is a little drawstring mesh bag that you put your soap in and you wash yourself using this so as your soap gets down to like nothing um like when it's a little bitty piece you can still use it because it still it stays in here and then we got a little bar of soap semi coconut danger and sea salt and it's foaming soap i can't really smell anything but that's neat a pirate's life chocolate flavor sorry chocolate covered cherry flavored coffee we got a little spoon here. It says Dragonfly. Oh, Dragonfly Inn. Oh, from Gilmore Girls. I wonder if we can use it with our little sugar dish. Ah, uh -uh. it's, I mean, it's a little short, but it'll work. And we got a cute little mushroom guy with a frog. 
Yeah, it's a pen. And then the book is Our Vengeful Souls by Christy McManus. I like this cover. It all started with a curse. Oh, yeah, this is giving me a little mermaid vibes. That's cool. And then the book looks like this. The end pages look like this. And this has a letter from the author. It says, Dear Reader, we all know her story, The Sea Witch, determined to seal the so steal the soul of the Little Mermaid, consumed with vengeance and a lust for power. There have been several versions of this tale, from the tragic original to the playful modern rendition. It is a classic favorite for every generation of what one will risk for love. But what came before the tale we know? What was the catalyst that placed the sea witch on the path for who she would become? Just like the Little Mermaid, it was love. Saria has her own story to tell, her own journey that took place centuries before she became the villain we all know. My goal with this story was to show the character behind the infamous name, a character of power and strength and ultimately love. For it is her love of her sister that set her fate in motion, and the love of a kind soul that stoked her vengeance. Thank you for reading Our Vengeful Souls and for embarking on Sierra's journey. I sincerely hope it exceeds your expectations and that you consider adding my future works to your TBR pile. My next novel, How to Get Over Your Best Friend's Ex, is a young adult romance coming in summer 2024 from Cam Cat Books. Happy reading, Christy McManus. All right. Awesome. A little mermaid retelling where we get like the villain's backstory. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. That's everything from all, however many boxes that was. <laughs> it seems like a lot. What was your favorite item? And what book are you the most interested in? Comment down below. So I think for me, oh gosh, the item that I like the most, oh my goodness, this is hard. I, oh, maybe the mermaid blanket or this tumbler probably one of those two and then the book that I'm most interested in I think was probably going to be Our Vengeful Souls second would be uh, Starling the House those are the two that I'm probably the most excited for well I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give me a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this click that subscribe button down below and until next time remember to always be completely you bye